Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Clint Hopkins. I am the Associate Pastor of the Crossing Community Church, where Harvey M. Walker is the pastor. We're here with you again on our Noonday Bible Study. We're here every Tuesday sharing the word of God with you, praying with you, prayerfully giving you something that you can use to help you make it the remainder of your day. Today, today we will be discussing four reasons, four reasons why his name Talking about the name of Jesus, his name is exalted above every name. Four reasons why his name is exalted above every name. But before we do that, you know how we always start off with prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We know that prayer changes things, that when we bring things to God in prayer, he hears us. And not only does he hears us, God, the sovereign of the universe acts on our behalf. And so if you have any prayer requests or prayer concerns, I'm going to ask that you would put those in the comments at this time. Just um, put them in the comments. Uh, submit your prayers up while we can pray together and then drop a line in the comments as well to let me know that you are on. I count it a privilege and an honor every time any one of you would join in with me on your noonday hour. I know you can be doing a lot of different things, but I thank God that you're with me on today. So let's drop a line in the comments to let me know that you're here. Armet Dempsey Gary, thank you for joining on today. Good afternoon to you as well. We're praying for you. Um, thank you for joining on at this time. And then make sure you share this on your page as well. Share this on your page as well so that we can reach out to somebody else. Uh, you have a bunch of different people in your, uh, on your friends, Facebook list that I don't know. And then you share with them and then maybe they will see it and be encouraged or somehow God gives them a word that they need for today. So please share this, please share this on your, on your, um, on your timeline so that we can reach out to somebody else. Uh, Miss Baldwin, Dorothy Baldwin, thank you for joining on and thank you for sharing as well. Thank you so much uh, for sharing this on your feed on today. Miss Thelma, love you much. Thank you so much for joining on and I definitely will be praying for them. I will be praying for them even right now. Thank you so much for joining on. Sister Payne, thank you. Good afternoon. Glad you're joining on here today. So good to see you on here. Let me know you're on. Just let me know you're on and share this on your page so that we could uh, we can reach out to somebody else. And then, like I said, if you have any prayer requests, you got any prayer concerns, listen, I believe in the power of prayer. I hope that you believe in the power of prayer. We're going to join. We're going to join in prayer together. Uh, and we're going to talk to God and God is going to move on our behalf. And you're going to have a testimony that God heard your prayer. And not only did he heard your prayer, that he acted also on your behalf. So let's get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. We bless you for your loving kindness and mercy. We bless you for your grace. We bless you because you are sovereign we bless you because you are righteous and you are holy. We bless you because you are God. And we are the created things, but you are the creator. Father, we know that you are so holy. In you exists complete and utter perfection in all things. And at our best, Lord God, we fall so short of your glory. We say things that are unrighteous. We do things that we should not do. Our hearts are wicked, hard, unloving at times. And we don't hold up to the image and to the ideal of what you created us to be, to be because of sin. So I am praying that you would forgive us, that you would purge us, that you would purify us and cleanse us of all sin and unrighteousness. You know those things that we hide from everybody else, but they're not hidden from you. They're completely in your eyesight. You know, even down to our thoughts, Lord God, and our intentions of our heart, there is nothing can escape your presence and there is nothing that we can do that can be hidden from you. And so we pray that you would forgive us even down in those deep and dark places, God, that nobody sees. Purge us, cleanse us, purify us in the blood of your son Jesus Christ thank you for the sacrifice that he made for us that we could be forgiven and then God we don't want to just be forgiven but we want to be filled with your spirit we want our hearts and our attitudes and our minds to change so that we don't continue on sinning but that we walk in a manner that is pleasing to you that gives you glory that does not grieve your heart give us the right heart Lord and the right mind challenge us in those areas where we're stubborn 
Challenge us in those areas where we are unforgiving. Challenge us in those areas, Lord God, to where we have just completely turned away from you. Challenge us in those areas that we're sitting in that we don't even know and we haven't been convicted of it. And turn us around and fill us with your spirit and let us know your truth so that we can walk in your truth. Father, we are praying that you would be be with us as we look at your word today. There are some, Lord God, that have submitted prayer requests and prayer concerns I am praying, Lord God, that you would see those requests, that you would see those concerns, and that you would touch now in the name of Jesus. We pray for Sister Hightower and her grandchildren right now, Lord God, praying that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus, that your hand would be up on them, Lord God, that you would strengthen them and help them to navigate young adulthood. We thank you, Lord God, for their praying grandmother who is standing in a gap for them, who is sustaining them by their prayers. And then, Lord God, we pray for those other prayer requests, like I said, that are un, unannounced, but yet you know what they are from different people who are getting on the stream. And we just ask that you would see and that you would act, and you would act in such a way, Lord God, that they would know that you answered these prayers and that you move because we submitted it unto you. And we thank you in advance of what you're going to do, God. We don't wait till we see it, but we have testimony right now. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I mentioned today, what we're going to do is we are going to talk about uh, why, four reasons why his name, Jesus' name, is above every name. Four reasons why Jesus' name is above every name. Sister Christy, good to see you on here. Good to see you, friend. Glad that you joined on today. Felicia, Felicia, good to see you. Felicia is always happy and excited. She put exclamation points by hello, Reverend Hopkins, on here, and that's the way her spirit is whenever you see her. So so glad you're on here, Felicia, and thank you for sharing this. And Sister Payne, we will continue to pray for you and pray for your family as well. Sister Baldwin, we will pray for Deborah Williams and her children. God, you see these requests and these concerns, and we pray that you would touch. Willie Mathis, thank you for joining on. Helen Kirkendall, thank you for joining on. We thank you so much. Thank you all for spending your time with me today. So we're going to look at four reasons why his name is above every name. Now, I'm going to take this from a very familiar passage in Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses. I'm going to read verses 5 through 11, and we're going to key in on verses 10 and 11. Uh, but I'm reading verses 5 through 11 for context. But uh, we're going to key in on reasons why Jesus' name is above every name. We find these words. I'm reading from a New American Standard. And if you have your Bible or something with you, I ask that you follow along with me. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But empty himself, taking the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason, this reason, his basically uh, his he for this reason, for him humbling himself and becoming obedient, even to the point of death on the cross. For the plan of salvation that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit worked out before the foundation of the world. It says, for this reason, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. And that's Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. And as I said, we key, we're keying in on verses 10 and 11, where it says, For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on, on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under heaven, under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Uh, William Shakespeare had a very famous quote, um, and he said that it was about what's in a name. 
What's in the name? And so it says, what's in the name? That which we call by a rose, by any other name, would smell as sweet. And it was saying that basically there's not much to a name. That's what Shakespeare was saying. He's saying there's not much to a name because that thing by which we call a rose, by we've given the name rose, if we call it by another name, it's still going to have the same essence. It's still going to smell the same. It's still going to look the same. It's still going to be the same, be the same. And so his thing was, what's in a name? But it's all but what we have excited. And, you know, I agree and I disagree with that. I agree with it because a name does mean something. And we think about in the sense, in the context, in the sense of our name and our reputation, our name can have a good reputation and mean something. And our, main, our name also could uh, have a bad reputation and mean something else. And so our name can mean something. But then again, when we peer in a little bit deeper uh, and we look at the issue at hand, um, I agree with Shakespeare because uh, it's really not much to the name but it's the character and the essence of the thing that we give a name. And so, for instance, like with his news example, we call a rose a rose, uh, and that's the name we've given it. But we don't like the rose because of a name. We, we like the rose because of the way it looks, the way it smells, its beauty, and its essence. And so, you know, in English, we call it a rose. In Spanish, they may call it something else. In German, they may call it something else. Uh, in, in, you know, in in Mandarin Chinese, they may call it something else, but we are assigning all these different names to it, but we are describing the same thing. It's character, it's essence, this thing of beauty that we like. Follow me, I am going somewhere with this. We can apply the same thing spiritually when we talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus has had multiple names. His given name on earth as he walked as a man was Yahshua. That's what is mama name? You know, what's his mama name? What is mama name name? They called him Yahshua. That was his Jewish name. And that name is broken up, which means Yahweh saves. Yahweh being the covenant name of God. You know, Yahshua was his name or Joshua, the English uh, transliteration. It's very, you know, it was a very common name during that time. But that's what they called him. They called him Yahshua, Yahweh saves. Because of, you know, translation in, into the Bible, the Bible written in Greek, um, and it's coming over from the Greek to English, we call him Jesus. And that's because his name, Yeshua, translated over into the Greek, is Jesus, which means the anointed one. And then coming over to English, we call that Jesus. But whether we call him Jesus or whether we call him Yeshua, the character and the essence of the man is still the same by which we describe. And so... I want to use this as a kickoff to look at we call Jesus um, we call Jesus our Lord and Savior and there is his name is the name that is above every name but it's not just in his name but it's in the character and the essence of who this person is and the main idea of what I'm trying to get at is that Jesus's name is exalted and Yahshua's name is exalted because of the man he is and the character and the essence of who he is and what he did for us. Who he is and what he did for us. And there is no other man in the whole span of human history that has did what he has did or who is even qualified or able to do what he did. And since he's the only human being in human history that is qualified to do what he did talking about the work of salvation and we're going to talk about that and go into the cross and had the character and essence of who he is God in flesh lived a perfect and sinless life that's why his name is exalted above every name so four reasons why his name is exalted above every name number one his name Jesus Yeshua Lord Savior Master is a saving name that's why his name is above every name, because it's a saving name, because the man behind the name is the only true savior that we have. In Matthew chapter one, verse 21, when the angel came uh, to Joseph uh, and it was the annunciation of the birth of Jesus Christ, they told um, they actually told Mary that you shall name it and told Joseph, you shall name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. 
And that was the first clue to Jesus' earthly parents of his mission and his purpose and his character, which was found intrinsically in his name. And they say, name him this because this is what he's going to do. And that is why his name first is above every name, because he is the only savior, the only one who was qualified to save us from our sins. Now, you could have said name him Clinton. Uh, but that wasn't mean that don't mean that you could have named him. He could have saved us from our sins or you could have named him a bunch of other different names. But the character and the essence behind my name is not savior. But the character and essence behind his name is savior because he's the only one who's qualified to save people from their sins. You might ask a question. Why was he qualified to save people from their sins? I'm glad you asked that question. Number one, because of his divinity. We believe in the doctrine of the Trinity, and I don't have time to go over that right now, but we do believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one God in three persons, three distinct persons, but yet one God. And the Son has existed eternally from the beginning, the foundation of the world. He, all things are created by him and through him. That is what the world tells us. Uh, Colossians tells us in him while he walked on earth that the fullness of the deity existed in him in bodily form. Uh, John John 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Um, you know, it goes down further around verse 14. It says that the word became flesh. And so this man named Jesus can carry the saving name because of his divinity, his originality in divinity, that he is a divine being come and incarnated and made flesh. And he walked this earth 2000 years ago. That's why he can save because he was divinity. The second reason why he can save, uh, not only because he was divinity, because when we look at him on on earth, he lived a perfect and a sinless life as a man. We can't miss we can't miss that and we can't just brush over that. Jesus was divinity. But the essence of two of why he's able to save us, because when he became a man, he came here and he lived a perfect and a sinless life. Why is that important? Because he was able to stand as a representative for all humankind. When we look back into the Old Testament, one thing that is beautiful about God is that God always works in patterns and he does the same thing. And when we look, for instance, in the pattern of the Old Testament sacrifices that were given from God to Moses and they established the whole sacrificial system. One of the things that was common among all sacrifices is that they had to be perfect and they had to be without blemish. And they stood as a representative to, you know, to cover sin and to atone for sin. So it had to be a representative that was perfect. And it was it was without blemish, without fault. And God says, listen, if this thing that you're offering to me has a blemish or it has a fault or this leg is broken or something's wrong with it, it's the runt of the litter, it's not the best. He says, don't offer it to me because I don't accept it. So now when we transpose that same thing into the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the only man, human being that live a perfect and a sinless life that is without fault, without fault and without blemish. Therefore, in his human state, since he lived without fault and without blemish, he could stand as a sacrifice to stand in the place for our sins and to cover our sins for us. Hence, going to the cross and dying on the cross so that he can be the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So he can have a saving. He has a saving name because it's his origin, his origin in divinity. And he has a saving name because when he came on this earth, he lived a perfect and a sinless life. And therefore, he can stand as a representative for us. That's why his name is above every name. You know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, why is Jesus the only way? And some people get offended by why Jesus is the only way. This is why he's the only way. Listen, I could die for, for you know, for somebody, but really it doesn't matter because I have my own sin and transgression. So I can't atone for anybody else. Really, I'm just atoning for my own sin because I deserve to die for my sins. And you, I don't care how good you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. You deserve to die for your own sins. All of us have a death penalty up on us for, for we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is where Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so if we die, we can't atone for everybody else because we really are just paying the price for our own sin. But Jesus being the perfect sacrifice, divinity and human as a representative He's able to die and carry all the sins of the world. 
carry all the sins of the world. He carries that weight because he's divinity. So God essentially is dying on the cross. Think about that. God died on the cross. And he stood as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's why he carried the weight to be able to save not only you and me, but all of humanity because of the one that died. That's why he has a saving name because of the character and the essence of who he is. His name is above every name because he has a saving name. Second reason. His name is above every name uh, because he has a comforting name. A comforting name. His name is comfort. The name of Jesus is comfort in the time of sorrow. His name is comfort in the time of loss and grief. His name is comfort in the time of death. In every human situation that we can stand and be in, the name of Jesus can comfort us and keep us. The Father, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, is called the Father of all mercies and all comfort. And he extends that ministry to the Son as well. He's the one of all comfort. Is able to carry us in grief and sorrow. Some of you have been at various points in your life over the past year, recently, really, at the point of grief and sorrow. And you wouldn't have made it if you didn't call out to the Son. This is why his name is above every name. See, you can call out to the pastor's name, you can call out to mama's name, you can call out to daddy's name, but when you call out to the name of Jesus, He can comfort you and keep you in the time of sorrow, in the time of grief, in the time of death, in every human situation. The name of Jesus will never fail you and it can comfort you even at the point of death. Even while you are dying at the point of death, his name can comfort you. I uh, was reading, yesterday was Memorial Day and I was reading through some of the... um, things that I saw on a couple of military websites. And there was a military chaplain that I met in officer candidate school, but his name is uh, Father Rochford, Father Rochford. Uh, and he was probably one of the most interesting and amazing uh, men I ever met. He served as a United States Marine in Vietnam. He fought in the Tet Offensive in the 60s and through the 70s. And then when he got out, uh, he... He went and made his profession as a Catholic priest, went through holy orders and seminary. And then he came back in as a Navy chaplain and he served with Marines and sailors um, in some of the most horrific times. In Iraq, he served and held soldiers' hands as they died. And he gave them last rites, those who were Catholic, and prayed over them as they died. Uh, from various gum rooms and and uh, maybe being hit by mortar fire or IED fire in the in the end points of their life, he would present them the Lord Jesus Christ and give them comfort as they die. And there's no other name that can do that. See, a lot of people can reject the Lord, they can reject God, they can do all those things, but then when they come to the point of death, they want something that is eternal. And it's the name of God and the Lord Jesus Christ that has comforted many men and women in the point even of death because his name is above every name. It's a comforting name. Third reason, third reason why his name is above every name. His name is not only a comforting name and a saving name, but his name is a conquering name. His name is a conquering name. Jesus' name is the only name that conquers death and the grave. He's the only one who has defeated death, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who has defeated death, that's looked death in the face, got up from the grave, and not only has he defeated death for himself, but he's did it for us as well. That our hope 
is in the resurrection because of what he did, because he got up from the grave. We have the hope that we will get up from the grave and defeat death as well because of his name, because of the character and the essence of the one whom we assign the name Jesus, that name that is above every name. He is the only one whom the father called out to on the third day, on that Sunday morning, 2000 years ago, and his body was resurrected. He got up from the grave, never to die again. And he's the only one, as we look in Revelation, after they go through the time of the tribulation and the seals are broken, and when he parts the sky and we all see him in his coming, he's the only one who's going to be able to call us from our state of death and raise us back up to life. Jesus is the only name that can do that. There are many other gods that are out there and people are going to be disappointed in the last day because, you know, they put their hope in all other things. That there's no other name that can conquer death and the grave except the name of Jesus Christ. And that's the hope that I have. That's the hope that I rest in. That's the hope that I hope that you rest in, that he is able, as Paul says, to keep you until that day. That we can entrust our lives, our eternity, our hope and our faith in him because he is able to keep us even until that day. We won't be disappointed. But we will rejoice in that day. Because we would know that we entrusted our name unto him and he's going to call us faithfully to life. And we will live forevermore in his presence because of that name. His name is a conquering name. His name conquers death in the grave. His name is also the only name that's conquered sin. His name is the only name that has conquered sin. Listen, we have this sin nature because of Adam. But we can be reborn and made new into a new life to where we don't have to be slaves of sin because of the second Adam, Jesus Christ. That's what Paul tells us in Romans around about chapter five, chapter six, around that area that the first Adam died, you know, and we all die. But now, since the second Adam lives, now we all can live in him and be raised to eternal life and conquer sin and death. You can't conquer sin in your own willpower. You might listen. You might be above some things, but other things you'll struggle with. But listen, there's nothing like entrusting yourself to the Lord and asking him to take the sin away and to help you by the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin. He gives you a power and he gives you a strength above sin, unlike anything else. And there's no other name that can give you power over sin and help you to conquer sin other than the name of Jesus Christ. And we can put our trust and our hope in his name to help us to overcome sin. That's why, you know, people try to have a solution about everything. And we think the mankind thinks that we are evolving to a better state. But listen, I don't care if it's now, it's 500 years ago, 500 years from now, we still are going to be sinful creatures. We still are going to be dealing with the same things if we don't turn our hearts to God. 500 years from now, 1,000 years from now, 2,000 years from now, we will be more advanced, but we still deal with the same human problems like they deal with them in the past because the human heart is the same that has been affected by sin. But thanks be to God for Jesus Christ, our Lord, because when we trust and put our trust in him, he's able to help us to overcome sin. And to walk, as Romans chapter 6 verse 4 says, in newness of life. Only the name of Jesus can do that. Jesus' name is a conquering name because his name is the only one also that has conquered eternity. His name is the only name that can carry us into eternity. Into the presence of God. We will not, listen, please, please trust me. We will not be able to be justified and made right before God unless we have entrusted in the name Jesus Christ. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't be deceived by the enemy. There ain't no other name. There are not many ways to God. There's one way to God. 
Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We come through that name. We come through that man who carries the name. And he's the only way that we can see and have a hope for eternity in him. Let me say this. All of us are going to have an eternity. Let me just make that clear. All of us are going to be in eternity. But we just got to decide which eternity we want to be in. If we want to be in, in, in the eternity, in the presence of God, we have to come through the name Jesus Christ. If we want to be in eternity, not in the presence of God, but punished forevermore, we just need to ignore the name Jesus Christ. It's your choice. But his name is the only name that can conquer eternity and usher us from this life to the next life. Only the name Jesus Christ. Don't be fooled and don't be scared. A lot of times people are scared now. They're scared to stand and say Jesus is the only way because they're scared that people are going to say that, oh, you're being, you know, closed minded or you're being fundamental. Or you're being this or you're being that. That's fine. There's only one name by which we can be saved. And if you don't like it, you just don't like it. But there's only one name that I put my hope in that's going to carry me from this life to the next life. And that is the name Jesus Christ. His name is the conquering name. And it conquers eternity. It conquers death and the grave. It conquers sin. It conquers eternity. The name of Jesus Christ. Last thing. His name is above every name. Because his name is the exalted name. It says this right here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. For this reason, God highly exalted him. For this reason, God highly exalted him. Jesus is the most famous name in human history. I, you know, just, just think with me for a minute. I don't care. Even if you don't really necessarily believe in the faith, here's some undisputable facts. Jesus, the name of Jesus, is the most recognizable and the most famous name in human history. The Bible, which testifies to Jesus, is the most famous and well-published book in human history. And people who don't necessarily even have faith, they know the name of Jesus. They know the story of Jesus. They know what he did. And even if they reject, you know, religion and Christianity and church, they still, listen, they still respect Jesus because of what he has done. Now, a lot of times they don't respect the church because of us and our sin and all the things that we do. And that's a whole nother topic. But they still respect Jesus and what he did. And at a core level, they believe that he is Savior and Lord. There are some who reject. Sure, there are many who reject. There are some of different faiths who don't believe in him. But even, you know, Jesus name crosses even across faiths. Just think about that. His name is highly exalted and lifted up. That's by purpose. It's because of Philippians chapter two, because of all he did, because he humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him to where now, 2000 years later, we still know this name of this. Listen, unassuming Jewish poor, poor man. He wasn't a king. He didn't have a lot of money. He didn't build a great kingdom. Earthly wise, Jesus was just a Jewish, listen, a Jewish peasant from the north side of, 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 of uh, from the northern region of Israel. He came from a small village. His daddy was a carpenter. His mama was a young girl. Listen, by all accounts, we shouldn't even know who he is. But yet 2000 years later, we know who he is. He walked the earth. We know his story. We know his healing. We know his miracles. His name has been cemented into human history. His name is exalted above every name. There ain't no other name like the name Jesus. His name is exalted above every name. It's because of Philippians. God is true to his word. Therefore, because of this, 
For this reason, his name is exalted above every name. There's no other name that you can put your trust in. There's no other name that you can put your hope in that is greater than the name Jesus Christ. I, hope, I pray somebody is hearing me on today. And I pray for the believer who maybe you've lost your hope or your trust in God, that you will reestablish your hope and your trust in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will never fail us. Even through this last year that we've had, and I know we had a lot of death, we had a lot of sorrow, a lot of tragedy, a lot of hard times. God has never failed us. And he will never fail us. His name is exalted above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in the heavens, on the earth, under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Why don't you bow with me for a word of prayer, and then I'm going to go over some announcements with you and then get you give you an opportunity to be able to give to this ministry, and we'll sign off. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you that we serve the risen Savior and the risen Lord. We thank you that we serve the one who has the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And we thank you that the man behind the name has earned the name. He went to the cross for our sin and transgression. He lived a perfect and a sinless life. He humbled himself and emptied himself from his divinity and put on this weak flesh. He was resurrected in power. He went to prepare a place for us. And one day he will come to receive us into himself. Thank you for the name that is above every name. And thank you that we serve the one who has a name above every name. We pray, Lord, that you would fill us with your spirit. You would give us, first of all, a mind to tell other people about the one who has a name above every name, not to keep it to ourselves, not to keep this good news to ourselves, but that we would tell everyone about the one who has a name above every name, whomever you would put in our path. And then we pray, Lord God, that you would continually fill us and cleanse us and purify us, that we can walk in the manner that is pleasing of the one who has a name above every name. That we wouldn't play around with sin. We wouldn't play around with transgression and iniquity. But that we would love and that we would live the way you require us to love and live. So that you can get the glory. For all things, you will get glory. Thank you, Lord God, for those who got on. I pray that you see the prayer requests and the prayer concerns that you touch. That you heal, that you deliver, that you guide, that you have your perfect work. And we'll give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for this time that you spent with me. I do want to go over some things with you uh, just to um, cover uh, first, you know, how you can give to this ministry. We thank God for you and those of you who continue to support this ministry. Listen, ministry takes money to make things happen, to be able to stream online, to have the cameras and to be able to do ministry the way we're doing it, be able to be a blessing to people. Um, it takes money to be able to do that. So we thank God for your faithfulness and your commitment. I thank God so much for you, those of you who are committed to Super Sunday, who gave to Super Sunday, who joined the team, or maybe you formed the team yourself. Thank you so much, listen, for your sacrifice. We don't take that for granted, and we bless God for you. Uh, what we want to do is just tell you about the different ways you can give to this ministry, the different ways that you can be a blessing uh, to this ministry. Let me bring up the screen now. That's how we commit, keep our commitment into the Lord. You can give via Cash App, dollar sign cross and HTX. Uh, give the dollar sign cross and HTX. You can give via Cash App and give via text to give. Here's the number, 832-358-3868. Uh, you, t you type in, text in the amount that you want to give. Uh, and you can give in that manner. You can go to that website, CrossingChurchHouston.com. CrossingChurchHouston.com. Select that online giving tab, and it'll say click to give. There'll be a button you'll click to give, and you can give in that manner. Um, and it, you can get your history of your giving as well. When you log in, uh, you have your history of your giving where you can keep a track of your giving that's been credited to you, uh, giving through that site. And then if you want to bless our pastor, our pastoral kingdom, kingdom building, you can give your cash app at dollar sign 
uh, Pastor HMW. There's dollar sign Pastor HMW. However you choose to give, listen, we thank God for you that you will partner with us. A couple other things. We are wrapping up our kingdom man and our kingdom woman. We have one more session coming up next week. We were off on this previous Monday in observance of Memorial Day. But I'm so grateful to God for uh, the kingdom man and the kingdom woman study. And we will be offering that in the future. And so if you missed on this go round, don't worry about it. Uh, you can catch it on another go round. And if you know somebody who would benefit from this study. Like I said, we're going to be offering again uh, in the near future. Uh, it's a great study where it talks about being a man and a woman who is completely submitted in every area of their lives and to the rule and the reign and the purpose of God. Then a couple of upcoming events. We're so excited. Today is June 1st and it kicks off our family month at the crossing. It kicks off our family month at the crossing. So we have, listen, we have a lineup of this great men and women of God who are going to be preaching every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we're going to ask that if you can, you can come out to the church, bring your entire family every Wednesday. And we're going to be focusing on one particular unit of the family every Wednesday. So every Wednesday night, seven o'clock, come out to the church. Uh, we're going to have start off on this Coming uh, Wednesday on tomorrow night with Shalandria Taylor, who is a great woman of God, a great preacher. And that's for the women's night. And then uh, we'll kick it off the next Wednesday with men's night, youth and young adult family night. And then we're going to honor our graduates on the last night. People who have paid that sacrifice and got that paper and walked down the aisle uh, from pre-K all the way up to graduate school. We're going to honor them on our last night. So uh, make sure you make a time to make your way out on Wednesday, every Wednesday in June. Then if you are new to the church and you join the church, we thank God that God has been adding to the church daily as he sees fit. Uh, we have a new members orientation that's going to be starting on June the 21st. It's going to be via Zoom, going to be via Zoom, but we're going to start orientation um New members orientation starting on June the 21st. And it's going to go on Monday nights. And so if you are a new member, no, you know somebody who is a new member and they want to go through the new members orientation and training. Uh, they can go through that and they can sign up on our website. If you go to our website um, or you can RSBP to C Hopkins at crossing church dot com. Or if you go to our website, there's a, a button that you can play, press and you can register in that manner. So I thank God once again so much for you. And I thank God for uh, you come in and be a part of this uh and i want you to remember that time spent with god is time well spent and i'm praying god's blessings and in, in his favor and his grace upon you today god bless you and god keep you